Hello and welcome to All Stars Online Season 3. This week we are joined by the 2018 World Brewers Cup finalist and 2014 World Cup Tasters champion from Taiwan, Lupin Liu. Did I get your last name right? Did yep. I pronounce that correctly? Okay, great. Yep. So nice to meet you, Lupin. So how are you? Nice how to meet you. Been? I'm fine. Doing good. And how are you? Well, we're okay. <laughs> we miss Taiwan. <laughs> Taiwan's doing a really good job through all this. So good on yeah. you guys. <laughs> And of course, we, we also would like to say thank you to our episode sponsor, Da Vinci Gourmet. Okay, so Lupin, we have a few videos coming up in this episode. And so we're going to show some videos. So we're going to ask you all about it. And we have our all-stars around the world answering some fun questions. We also have Lupin's signature beverage video. And we have a look back at a memorable moment in the World Coffee Championship. So everyone stay tuned. We will start with our all-stars around the world video and then come back and have a chat with Lupin about his coffee career and life in general. Uh, Martin, Lawrence'ı uh, isterdim çünkü yerine gel yani yerine göre hem eğlenceli hem ciddi oluyor. Ee, ve bizim işte çoğu zaman ciddi ve çoğu zaman böyle goy goy ve eğlence olduğu için onu oynamasını isterdim açıkçası. There is one actor and it will be definitely uh, Jude Law because many of my friends they said that um, I'm kind of similar, we are similar to each other. Se dovessi scegliere un'attrice che mi possa interpretare in un film sceglierei sicuramente Uma Thurman, mi ricorda Kill Bill. It's a difficult one, but, um, for sure nobody would play me in a movie, but if so, um, nice would be obviously someone who's really funny, like, I don't know, Jim Carrey or so, but uh, more depth it would be with Tom Hanks or so, who is an amazing actor in switching different roles, so... That would be a movie about my life. I don't think that that would be interesting to anyone. But I think the character which could play me in a movie would be my friendly neighbor Totoro. So I think Liam Hemsworth would be a great, uh, a great star to do that. He's uh, not only a good actor, but he's uh, he's already got the accent down pat, so he would be uh, halfway there. Okay, that was so much fun. So, Lupin, did you get to think about it? What is your answer to that question? Who would play you in a film about your life? Uh, I think it's Johnny Depp. I can see why. Any other reason aside from like the hair and like the facial hair? Uh, I think uh, uh, because I thought that uh, Johnny Depp is also like rock music, and I like rock music also. And uh, uh, he's a uh, uh, very not lab handsome guy. He's a little bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. In a good way, in a very good way. So now we are going to ask a few questions and chat with Lupin. Okay. So I think a lot of people want to know how did you start your career in coffee? Uh, when I, after I, uh, uh, can I speak Chinese? Of course. Uh, 在, 在我就是大学毕业之后, after my, I finished my university school, and uh, 我, 我结束了那个我的兵役, 我结束了我的兵役, 然后跟大部分的台湾的大学生一样, 我们大部分没有办法知道说我们在就业之后要做什么。所以因为我父亲的关系,所以我开始,因为我父亲很喜欢咖啡,所以我开始尝试了这个咖啡的饮品。And and when was this? How many years ago was it? Uh, eight years. Eight, eight years. years. Ago. Okay. So when you started drinking coffee, and it was because of your dad, um, what was your like most memorable cup of coffee or like experience that 
that sort of made you say, "Hey, I, I think I wanna, I want to explore coffee some more." Uh, I think, I think I have a little bit t- talent on the sensory tasting something on the coffee. Mm-hmm. So I choose to 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 carry on. So um, what was it that? That made you realize you had the talent. Was it? Were you doing cuppings already, or did you, were you in any training of some sort? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, first I go to have the uh, license of CQI. So the, the curator Q-grader. license. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and then, yes. Go ahead. And I, I understand what is the specialty coffee. And uh, uh, I have uh, more pa- I have a more patient and uh, interesting in the coffee industry. And and at what point did you get interested in competitions? What point I get interested in in competition? the competitions? Yeah, when did you start thinking of competing? I start thinking to competing because I want. I just want to. Uh, 我我只是想要就是去挑战一下自己的能力在哪边。So so where were you at that time? You were not working in the coffee industry. This was just all an interest. Yeah yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> And so when you competed. Is it correct? It was just like one year into working in coffee. Yes, exactly. A little bit over a Got year, it. and yeah. then you decided to compete. Um, how did you prepare for that competition? Ah, I just is with everyday, the, just, uh, like, uh, coffee, the, taster, like, just, always, 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 台湾的冠军之后，我开始更认真的去针对比赛，然后做练习。So this was um when so the first time you competed, you already made it to the champ the national championship, and then you made it to the world championship. That all happened in the same year. Oh yeah. Wow, that is a gift. You you really are gifted. Okay, and so at what point did you start? Ever did you ever work in the coffee industry? At what point did you start working in the coffee industry? After I won the world champion, 在我拿到世界冠军之后 So that's a unique story. I think other people do it the other way around. <laughs> so, so what was your best memory about competing? Means the cup taster or brewers cup or both? Yes, both, both, <laughs> both. Uh. 当然是拿到冠军的时候。Not everyone gets. 但是，但是，呃、uh, ，but， <笑>但是我觉得我呃，我们在我们在准备比赛的过程中，我们可以更加的了解自己以及咖啡，然后我们可以让咖啡的技能变得更加的卓越。然后呃，在。这个过程中，我们有有得到一点收获的时候，我觉得那都是最开心的时候。So, so do you plan to compete again? Uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Not yet. Uh, not yet. Uh, if there is one or maybe two tips you can give anyone who's thinking of competing, what do you think? Are those things they have to remember? Uh, I think, first, you need to have a team of competitors, and have a certain resources, and have a very strong mindset. Wow, you are very strong. 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 Do you want to tell us about this photo? What is this all about? What was happening here? Uh, 除了咖啡之外，我花了很多的时间在就是独立音乐上面
，然后除了自己的音乐创作之外，我也在乐团中担任就是吉他手的角色。然后这是一支叫做 Shoot Up 的独立乐团。那这个曲风是我们大部分玩的曲风是 Punk Rock、Ska Punk 跟 Hardcore。那如果有兴趣的话，大家也可以去串流平台上面听听看。关键字可以搜寻 Shoot Up 6535。Shoot up six five three five in Spotify.、Yeah. Okay,、yeah. and where was this? This photo, where was this taken? Oh,、uh, this is we play in Taiwan's live house. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, we're definitely going to check you out on Spotify after this. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. But before that. <laughs> Before we go to Spotify, we're going to check out Lupin's signature beverage video. Lupin, do you want to introduce the video? Okay. Uh, Taiwan is a very hot country, a very hot water river. And our 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 很容易可以制作并且随手可得的食材，然后让一般的观众在家也可以跟着这样的影片去制作非常轻松、非常家常的一个调饮。I'm Pan Yu Liu, come from Taiwan. You can also call me the Pan. I'm 2014 World Cup Taster Champion. And 2018 World Brewers Cup Championship finalist. Oh, bravo! Wow! And today this beverage is what I always drink at home. And the procedure is very easy. You can also make it by yourself. And there's now I I want to introduce what I prepared. And there's grinder, uh, my pot, and the coffee bean, beers. And something else, blah blah blah. And I call this beverage beer or coffee. And first, we have to brew the coffee. And today, I prepare is washed Ethiopia coffee. And the most、uh, important thing is the coffee's flavor has to match with the beer's flavor. And today, I choose the Ethiopia coffee, which has a lot of rich citrus fruity flavor. And the, the white beer also have fruity flavor, like、uh, banana and、uh, citrus, lemon. Okay. And today I will use the 30 grams coffee. And the grinding.
a few minutes later. And today I will use Aeropress. I won't use the, the espresso machine because it has to be easier to make it at home. Yep. And uh, the Aeropress, the Aeropress will bring me the high DDS coffee and it's very fast and easy to use. Okay. This is my coffee. Ooh, it smells good. And now it's time to brew. And the water's temperature is 82 Celsius degrees. And I will use the 130 miles water. And stir. And wait until 30, 30 minutes. And press it. And finish at one minute. Oops. And uh, freeze, freeze. It. Sorry, excuse me. Okay, now and now I gonna add some popping candy on the dishes. This is popping candies, and uh, uh. It will bring coffee more sparkling textures. Okay. And uh, I will spray some orange on the edge of my glass and put a coffee candy on. Some ice cube. And my coffee. Coffee is one hundred mils. And the beers. This buckskin beer is from Taiwan and uh, it has a lot of fruity flavor. I told you before, it's banana and uh, citrus. Okay. Beers for 50 ml. And uh, finish. Mm, it's good. It's my coffee or beer. Thank you. Time. Nice. That looks very interesting. That's a fun video. So did you enjoy making that? And is this something you prepare for yourself all the time? Uh, nice. Um, so, okay, let's, let's talk a little bit more about your very interesting story in coffee, okay? Um, so, how did it feel like, okay, so we know you like challenging yourself, you really enjoy working with your team and really stretching your skills, but what was it like competing in the world stage? For the world uh, competition? 我觉得... 
，我觉得能能站在能代表自己的国家在世界的舞台上是一件非常幸运的事，然后也是非常有压力的一件事。然后我我一直在舞台上是用尽了全力，想要把整个团队的最棒的成果去展现出来。We know you're still thinking. If you will compete again, but if if you were to compete again, which of the different competitions are would do you think you'd be more inclined to join? Ah, I've often thought about going to compete again in the World Cup, to compete again in the Cup Taste competition. Ah, to look at what it's like in the 十年前的自己和十年后的自己，在这种感官啊、sensory 上面的能力上的差异。That's true. <laughs> were were the competitions in 2014? Was it the exact same rules and exact same way of doing things as they do now, or were there changes? 呃、uh, ，就我所知，好像有一些在规则上面的一些更改，但是变化不大。Okay, so that would be interesting. And okay, looking back at the competitions that you've joined,、um, what was more challenging for you? Was it Cup Tasters or was it Brewers Cup? And how different is it really? Uh, Cup Taster 跟 Brewers Cup 是两个完全不一样的比赛。然后在 cup taster 里面，我们需选手需要专注在咖啡和自己上面，所以是比较单纯的。但是在在 Bruce Cup 上面，我们需要去面对评审。那我觉得这会是比较对我来说是比较复杂、比较复杂的。嗯、mm. ，Yeah, there's like a whole performance involved in 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 Brewers Cup. Okay. So, what keeps you busy these days? What have you been up to?、Uh, work, and、uh, always coffee and、uh, music. Always coffee and music. Any any new projects we should be looking out for? Ah,、uh, no, no. I'm just working. Ah, I, I, I'm, I, 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 咖啡是我的工作，然后我一直在担任就是顾问的这方面的工作。目前来说，没有什么其他特别的计划。That's still a lot, <laughs> and music, of course. So again, Spotify. Okay, thank you, thank you for answering all those questions, Lupin, about you know everything with the competition and and really our mindset during the competitions. And again, we would like to thank our sponsor. Thank you so much, Da Vinci Gourmet, for being the sponsor of today's episode. Okay, so we're going to our next video now, which is our look back at memorable moments. And this week, we are going back to the World Coffee Championships in Berlin. I hope you enjoy it. So, World of Coffee in Berlin was one. Super exciting year and super exciting event because it took place in the town where I lived, like my town. By now, I moved、uh, to Italy. Having the fact to have、uh, a world of coffee events,、uh, event and competitions in Berlin, was super exciting for me and、uh, also my colleagues. I used to work、uh, at La Mazzocco Germany back in the days for the German branch office, and we were very excited. We wanted to present the town. And also the, the the nice positive things on the town in in the best way possible, which was starting at the booth.、Uh, how how do you see and how do you present La Mazzocco in the best way、uh, on the event, but also of course on the side events. So、uh, one part was to organize a huge party.、Uh, I know that La Mazzocco is known for parties.、Uh, we had the idea to do it a little bit more smaller, so it was limited to 500 guests. Didn't work out.、Uh, we had almost three thousand, but、uh, the capacity was was still okay. <laughs> Berlin, Berlin was hot. 
That was that was a nice summer, hot summer, and I remember it was sweating hot. Uh, yet the venue was well air conditioning and everything was there. Uh, meeting with people and, and visiting uh, Berlin as one of those major capitals in Europe was was uh, great. It's a great experience. There's lots of there's tons of coffee shops and places famous people working at the bars it's it's really particular and really worth visiting not to mention the, the famous uh, speakeasy cocktail bars and, and places where you can get a really good cocktails i was judging coffee and good spirits there what i remember about berlin a little bitter for me is that i didn't get to judge the finals it's because of Agnieszka Rojewska. So she made it to the finals and by that she kicked me out from the judges panel. So I was a little sorry, but not sorry at all. There's like a soft spot in my heart for Berlin only because it was our last competition before COVID or our last world competition before COVID. And it was my first time in Germany and my family's all from Germany. Like my mom's family is, um, you know, like I'm second generation American from Germany. And it was, it felt really like exciting to be there. The competition itself was pretty challenging. Um, the venue was very, very hot. Every single day, the barometric pressure would change in like the humidity would in change so much in the venue from morning to afternoon. Like a, it felt like almost like a thunderstorm rolled in, even though there was clear skies. I don't think we actually got any rain. The amount of humidity that changed in the venue from the morning to the afternoon was really challenging for the grinders. For latte art, we just keep the hoppers filled and all the competitors use the same coffee. And so, and we always test between competitors to make sure that, you know, nothing's gotten, you know, really out of line. We make sure that they're pulling an espresso range. Competitors are welcome to adjust the grind as they would like. But every day of the latte art competition in like the 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. time, we just like lost all this time and got behind with the schedule because it was so challenging for the volunteers to get that grinder to stay in espresso range because it was just like the humidity would come in and you had to like do crazy adjustments to the grind. That was actually really, really challenging mostly. I think that was probably one of the hardest things in Berlin was just working with the weather. But the finals for SIGs, was like the most all-star finals. It was like Aga, you know, you have Arnon, you have all these people, plus Dan Fellows who had won the year before, all these people who had won other competitions were in the finals. Was it five out of six of the finalists had been uh, champions in other competitions? And then Dan won again for the second time. And that was just absolutely, that was just crazy. It was just so exciting. Everyone was, you know, he was in shock. Everybody was just really excited about how um, how incredible that that group of finalists were for that for that year. That event looked like so much fun. I wish I was there. Okay, our last video is from the 2019 World Cup Tasters Championship finalist Dio Artson. Dio is going to be talking to us about stress management and mindfulness in coffee competitions. So this will be very good advice for all coffee competitors. In the previous two episodes, we talked about how we can control feelings of stress, either with meditation, breathing exercises, and embracing these feelings of, of stress as well. Now I'm going to talk about mental training. First, talk about mental toughness. What is mental toughness? It is going further than you might think you can. It is going out of your comfort zone to become better. And that's mentally tough. For example, for cup tasters, uh, when you are doing sets where you score six, seven, eight out of eight, that's great. Like it, it gives you confidence, it gives you a good feeling, but it also shows that you're within your comfort zone. If you want to improve, you 
must go out of that comfort zone. And that means searching your limits. Uh, that means doing sets where maybe you will score one or two out of eight, uh, which is frustrating. And I've done multiple, multiple series where I had really low scores. You start to doubt in yourself. Uh, it, it's frustrating, but it's super important to go search your limits and to broaden your comfort zone because that's how you will improve and how you will get more comfortable on stage on the real competition day. Okay, very useful tips. Now, Lupin, how have you managed stress in the competitions? Uh, never. <laughs> never. Never stress. No. Yeah, the way is I don't want to manage my stress. <laughs> You don't manage your stress or you don't get stressed? Yeah. Which one? <laughs> I don't <laughs> I have a lot of stress, but I don't I don't want to manage. Does the stress will help you in winning the competition? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, we're gonna need to have Lupin and Dio talk to each other and align. <laughs> okay. Okay. So thank you for that tip, Lupin. <laughs> okay. Be before we we head on towards the end of the show, cup tasters is really all about sensory and being able to, you know, have amazingly sensitive taste buds and be able to describe the coffees, which is not an easy skill set. And also sometimes you taste something, you try to explain it, but the other people don't quite understand it right away, right? So, so sensory yep. is complicated that way. For those who are wanting to improve their sensory skills, what are some tips or advice that you can share with them? Uh, so taste everything and then remember everything you taste. Okay. Yeah. And maybe focus on the detail. Maybe not be in coffee when you're competing. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much. Focus on the details and always challenge yourself. I think those are two things that I will remember from, from our chat, Lupin. Um, okay, so thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us. Um, and everyone, don't forget that on Thursday, Lupin will be live on the Bar Barista Guild's Instagram Live where he will be chatting some more about his coffee career. So we'll see you then. We hope you enjoyed the show. Lupin, would you like to say goodbye and some final words? Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye from Lupin. See and you John in Taiwan. Kia. See you in Taiwan. I hope so too. Yeah, see you in Taiwan. Yeah. Yes, Annie. <laughs> <laughs>